Have you ever wished to be able to do automation on your live console but never tried to because it all seems so complicated or too much of a hassle to send and receive MIDI from your console and have a session running on your computer and whatnot? What if I told you that there's a really simple way? You can have one button that allows you to move faders, change sends, do EQ moves, change effect parameters all together, and you can decide exactly each one of these how much time it's gonna take to complete the transition. Well, turns out you can't do that in Mixing Station. Button, click, click, changes the level of faders. I'm using that in my church to turn down the crowd microphone during the sermon and push up the microphone of the preacher so that it's an appropriate level of speech for the live stream. Then when the sermon ends, just turn off that button and it will bring back the crowd microphone and turn down the main microphone again to an appropriate level so that it's balanced with the rest of the music. So I'm going to teach you how to do that, but not only that, you can do a lot more with this button, control a lot more parameters. So let's go to the gear icon on the top and go to the layouts page and I'm gonna create a new layout just for the sake of it. Let's make some room here. I'll lift this up and I'll go to the plus icon, general and create a button. Put that button right here, make it nice and big, click on it. Settings right here, you can give it a name. So let's call this song one. Right here under theme, you can choose a color for that button. So I'm gonna choose magenta and you can change the size of the text. That is the label of the button. So I go back here. You see the text is bigger. The button is a magenta color. Go back in. We have different behaviors for the button. Click is you have to press and release in order to turn on the button. So if I assign something to this and press on it, it doesn't turn on until I release my finger. So if I press and I change my mind, I can just get away from it or keep pressing long enough and it will not turn on. In order to turn it on, I have to click and release. Long click is you have to press and hold, then it will turn on or off. So I press and hold, you see this bar right here? That's the exact time it needs to turn on or off. Touch is like the click, but as soon as you press on it, it turns on. It doesn't wait for you to release your finger. Just click. With the click, you can press on it, and if you change your mind, you can move away from it and it will not turn on. With the touch, it turns on or off as soon as you touch it. And momenter, you have to keep holding to keep it on. So if I click like this, I have to keep holding it. If I release it, it gets back to the previous state. So I'll just choose click. But if you don't want to accidentally press on button, you can choose long click so that it's more intentional. You have to press and hold. So let's go into click behavior, add action. And under action type, I will choose modifier and set value. Right here, you can choose the value that the parameter will change into when the button is turned on. And right here, you choose the value when the button is turned off. And in the fade time is how long it takes to change between these two values. So if I put right here, 500 milliseconds, that's half a second. So when I turn on the button, it's going to take half a second to move from minus 8.5 to plus 3. And there's an absolute mode and a relative mode. And I'll talk about the relative a bit later. So let's go into absolute go back. We assigned this set value modifier to the button, but it's not modifying anything yet because we still need to give it a channel and a parameter on that channel to change. So I'm going to click on add action under that modifier and under action type, I'm going to click on it and choose fixed channel because I don't want it to change just any channel that is selected. I want it to change a specific channel. So let's choose channel number five, for example, and go to main and fader. This button is changing the level of the fader of channel five, the main fader that goes to the main left right. And it takes exactly half a second to change between these two values. And I can assign multiple faders with multiple different values to it with multiple different times. I'll choose add action, not under the modifier, but under the button itself. Add action, action type, and modifier set value minus one plus two, and it's gonna take 1500 milliseconds. So that's one and a half seconds. Go back, add another set value plus four minus 90. And that is actually minus infinity because the lowest value the faders go to is minus 89. So if you want to turn it all the way down, it will be minus 90. And let's choose this to be 2500 milliseconds. So that's two seconds and a half. Go back, and we still need to assign channels to these set value modifiers because right now they are not doing anything yet. So I'm gonna go under the second one, add action, fixed channel, and it's gonna be channel number two, and then go to the main, fader, then go back, go to the last modifier, add action, fixed channel, it will be channel number one, main, fader, 
go back. And now if I press on this button, these faders are changing to different values at different speeds. And the reason you're seeing this IDCA fader snap is because I set it to ignore minus infinity. So basically, if this is all the way down, it will ignore it as if it's not in the IDCA. But this doesn't matter for what we're doing right now. So you can do faders with that, but not only faders. You can control pretty much every single parameter with that button. So let me go back in here and add another button and I'll call it song2 and give it a text size of 20 also and I'll make it the color cyan. I'm gonna choose the click behavior and add action. Under action type, I'll choose Modifier set value three plus one. And I want it to take 400 milliseconds. Go back and I'm going to assign a parameter to that modifier. So click add action, go to action type, fix channel. I'm going to choose channel number four and I want to control an EQ band. So I'm going to click EQ and choose band number four, which is the high shelf. It depends on how many bands exist on your channel or bus that you're trying to control. So one is the lowest band and six is the highest band. The next person that's gonna talk has a duller voice. So I'm gonna make it a bit brighter without actually going into the EQ. So I chose the band that I'm modifying and I will select gain. If I go to channel four, click that button, you can see it's raising and lowering the high shelf by the exact amount that I set, plus three and plus one. And you can add as many of these modifiers as you want. Now, let me just quickly show you what other things you can do. You can change the icon, but I don't recommend this because click on it, it changes the icon, but you can't click on it anymore. It basically breaks the button. You can choose to change different parameters in the compressor. You can also change EQ bands and change specific bands or the current selected band. I don't recommend to choose current because the way you would use this button is to change something specific, right? So just choose the band that you want to change and you can choose if it's changing the frequency or the gain or the cue, how narrow or wide it is and change parameters in the gate. The headamp is actually the physical preamp gain. This is confusing because this is called headamp and this is called preamp. Preamp here means the preamp section of the channel. So in the preamp section, you can change the low cut filter, the frequency of the filter or the trim. And in this case for the MR18 mixer, the trim is this, the USB trim. So if your channel has a USB input coming from your computer, this is actually the trim that's changing it. And you can change the main fader of the channel or the panning of the channel to the main mix or the levels of the send of that channel to certain buses. So if I choose here bus number six, this set value modifier will change the send level of channel number one to bus number six. Or if you're using a stereo linked bus, you can also change the panning to that bus. So right now it's bus number six level channel one go back and I'll go into bus number six to show you and turn this on see it's changing the level of that channel number one to bus number six not to the main left right so you can change tens level this way you can also change things in the console like effects parameters you can change for example the decay time of the reverb with this button you set it to a certain time and then you click it again it changes back to another time or the size of the room or whatever the parameters of the effects are i told you i'll talk about the relative mode of the set value modifier and this is the time to talk about it first of all if you set it to relative this off value is meaningless no matter what is in here it doesn't matter. It doesn't read it at all. What it does is if you have a positive value in the on value right here and you click the button, turn it on to add plus three to whatever value already existed. And when you turn it off, it will subtract three from what value already existed. It's adding three dB, subtracting three dB. That's really cool. And if I move it like this and click it again, it only changes it by three dB plus or minus. And that gives you more flexibility than the absolute value. But there's the danger in this is that if you get disconnected from the app, the button will automatically be turned off while the fader is still at the same place. So right now, let's say it's at zero dB and it's on and I get disconnected from the app and I connect again. Now the button is automatically turned off because it's reading what already exists. That is 0 dB. Then you click on it again to activate it and it's adding 3 dB. You don't want it to go to plus 3. And that may create problems in certain situations. So just be aware of that. With the absolute value, if the fader is not changed, the button will still be on even if you get disconnected and you reconnect again. And if you click it, it will not keep adding to it 
it will change it to the exact value that you already set. So in most cases, in my opinion, the safest option is to just use the absolute mode. But now you know what the relative mode means. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and click on the video on the screen right now. And I'll see you there.